everyone. Welcome to What's Cooking in Lakeville. We're here today on location at the beautiful Spring Rain Farm in East Taunton on Caswell Street. We're going to be picking strawberries and then taking them home and making some really delicious dishes for you. Um, we have a special couple special guests here with us today, my son Benjamin and a bunch of his buddies from Assawamset Elementary School's his kindergarten class. We're really excited that they're here today and we're going to go have some fun. Come on. Hi, we're Billy and Mary McCaffrey at Spring Rain Farm on Caswell Street in East Taunton and this is our 15th summer of having berries to pick. Um, we do cranberry bogs and firewood and beef and pork as well, but uh, we're here with the strawberries right now and my husband has some right in his hand. We had a slow year this year because we had a lot of snow this winter, so we opened one week later than we usually open. Uh, we always open on Memorial Day. We keep the rows really clean and neat. We mow the grass so when you're kneeling down and you pick, it's easy for you to pick. The beds are eight inches tall. We have, we have 10 different cultivars. So the bed that you're looking at right now are called Chandler's. But we're only open about three weeks to five weeks is the longest. And we welcome everybody to come. Some people say, well, are, is it okay to bring kids? It's great to bring kids. And they can pick to their heart's content. There's no admission fee to get in here or anything. So you can just come, bring a lunch, sit on the grass if you want to stick around. Um, Strawberries, my favorite way to prepare them is just to slice them, put a little bit of sugar and squirt whipped cream all over them with a homemade shortcake. I don't think it gets too much better than that, but of course strawberry rhubarb pie isn't too bad either. So what's your favorite? Well, all of the above. I, I, <laughs> uh, I like strawberry rhubarb pie, I like strawberry shortcake, uh, strawberry jam. But what I really like about this is I want the kids to come and be an outing. I want them to eat and, and play outside and have a good time and make sure they eat plenty and make sure they have a good time because I think that we need to involve kids a lot with the outside world and where their food comes from. Hi everyone, welcome to What's Cooking in Lakeville. I'm Jessica Bradley and I'm so glad you joined me today. Today we are gonna be working with the beautiful strawberries that we um, picked at Spring Rain Farm in East Taunton with my son Ben and all his little buddies from Aswamsett Elementary School. So I thought that what we could do today would be make one of our family's favorite desserts, strawberry rhubarb crisps. I also wanted to make for you a strawberry jam, which is super simple. Um, you'll probably never want to buy one at the grocery store again. And then lastly, a nice, fresh, healthy, light salad of arugula, strawberry, some goat cheese, a little homemade dressing. Um, so three different ways uh, that we can use beautiful, fresh strawberries when they're in season. And to, you know, to be honest, you can even use them from the grocery store when they're not. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna to do today is put together the strawberry rhubarb crisp. So what I have here are two cups of strawberries that I've already um, taken the stems off and chopped them into bite-sized pieces. So when you're choosing strawberries for your strawberry rhubarb crisp, um, you wanna choose the ones that are as delicious and um, dark red and juicy as you can find. So these are beautiful because we just picked them at the farm. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the stem off and cut them into, if they're a little bit small, you can cut them in half. If they're a little bit bigger, you can cut them in like three or fours, whatever you need. And actually, I'm going to measure out two more cups of berries. So that one's a little bit smaller, so I just cut it that one in half. And this should go pretty quick. Here's a tip. I call for about a half a cup of sugar in this recipe. Now, if it's the winter and you're making this, and your berries are kind of white in the middle and they're not as um, red and juicy and sweet as these ones tend to be, you can just adjust the sugar up a little bit. So you can just play with that to make it as sweet or as tart as you'd like. But you're definitely gonna need some sugar because the rhubarb that we're gonna add is nice and tart. Okay, a couple more ingredients. I have a very large stock of rhubarb here. You can either use one large or two small stalks of rhubarb. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna trim off the ends 
and then we're going to slice it in just small half moons. We'll just slice this kind of on a little angle. And rhubarb is very, very tart, but it adds a real nice flavor and texture to a crisp because it stays a little bit firmer than the berries will. All right. Rhubarb is not an ingredient that I ever used until I met Justin. He grew up eating actually just rhubarb crisp or rhubarb pie, and so he really loves the tartness. Um, we add it, and I always add the strawberries now, kind of for that classic combination, but this is something I learned to work with for my hubby. So, okay, so we're gonna add those together. Let's see, okay. So a couple more ingredients into this mixture. We're gonna add the zest and the juice. We're gonna add the zest of this whole orange and the juice of half of it. So, to zest, I think I've showed you guys how to zest before. You just need a microplane or a, or a fine grater and you just take the, the citrus fruit that you're using and run it along until the peel comes off. You don't want to get this white piss underneath because this is a bitter taste, um, but the, the colored part of the peel adds a lot of flavor and, a, and it has the oil, so it adds a lot of um, scent as well, which is really lovely. And I really love adding the citrus into this because I feel like it brightens it up. Okay, there we go. Then you're just gonna wanna flip that over and scrape all that yummy zest right in. Okay, let's zest the, let's um, get the zest of a lemon while we're at it as well. I'm gonna take this whole zest off of this lemon and then I'm gonna add the juice of the entire lemon in here. Cause it's small. I like how the tartness of the lemon plays off the tartness of the rhubarb. Okay, I'm gonna add the juice of this whole lemon. And I love this for juicing lemons. It's just you put it in and squeeze. And what I love about it is, well, it's easy, makes it a lot easier, but it catches all the seeds as well. So you don't have to be picking seeds out of your crisp or whatever it is that you're juicing your lemons into. Okay, that's the juice of a lemon. And then we're gonna add the juice of half this orange. And this doesn't have any seeds, so we're just gonna squeeze it right in. I like to get my fingers in there when I juice an orange or a citrus without um, seeds that I'm worried about going into my bowl because it just really breaks up the pulp inside and makes the juice come out easier and quicker. Okay, a couple more ingredients to add to this. We're gonna add about a half a cup of sugar, like I had said before. You can adjust that up or down based on the um, ripeness of the strawberries. And then this is one tablespoon of cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken up the natural sauce or juice um, that the fruit creates. The fruit and the juice from the citrus, it's gonna create a nice thick sauce for the fruit. All right, I'm gonna give this a quick stir. Just gently toss it together until it's all incorporated. The next step that I'm gonna show you how to do is to make the topping. What I've combined here already is three quarters of a cup of flour and three quarters of a cup of old fashioned oats. So to that, I'm just gonna add a couple more ingredients. Why don't we do this? I'm gonna add a half a cup of brown sugar right in. I am going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon right in. And I'm also going to add about a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. Um, you can just do this with your zester. If you have a microplane, you can do that as well. Oops, careful your fingers. I almost got mine there. Now I'm gonna lightly stir this together, just kind of with a fork to break up the brown sugar to incorporate it all. You don't want any huge clumps of brown sugar. The last ingredient we're gonna add is one stick of unsalted butter. And you want the butter to be fairly cold when you use it. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
cut it up into small chunks and then we're going to incorporate it into the topping. So you're going to cut it in half and then flip it over, cut it in half again, and then just go and chunk it. Small little cubes. Okay. We're going to add this into the topping and we're going to work it in until the topping looks like it has pea-sized pieces in it. And I always use my hands um, for this just because I found that when I try to use um, a fork or you know any other kind of instrument or utensil, it doesn't work as well and it's quicker to do it this way. So just get in there with your clean hands. They're your best kitchen tool anyway. And work it together. Just kind of mush it all in between your fingers. And this is a great topping for any really fruit crisp. You can do this, I mean, I do it for apples. You can do it with peaches, blueberry. Blueberry crisp is one of our favorites. Um, and really, you can, it's the same um, mixture as well to put on top of the fruit. You just adjust up and down the amount of sugar that you need based on the sweetness of the fruit. And um, whether you add lemon zest or orange zest, it, you know, it can all just be based on your taste. Okay, so this is good. Okay, so this is all mixed up nice. So the last step we're going to do is we're going to take some cooking spray, or you could use butter if you wanted, um, and spray a baking dish. I like this size. It's, you know, you could use a 6x6 six six or an 8x8. Eight eight. We're going to add the strawberry rhubarb mixture in. Yummy. And then we're going to top it with the topping. Now, you probably noticed that I have this on a baking sheet lined with aluminum foil. And I have that done because um, in case any of this, the juices bubble over, you don't want that burning on the bottom of your oven because it's impossible to get off. Okay, so just put this on in clumps doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, you don't want it to be perfect. This is a rustic dessert. Okay. And I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees, and we're going to bake this until the juices are bubbling and the topping is golden brown. Usually about a half hour. Could be a little more, could be a little less. Okay. Okay. So let's get this in the oven. All right, so we're going to get started on making a really simple strawberry jam. It's one of our favorites in our house and it's super easy to make. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by using the ripest fruit that we can find again. And what we're going to do is we're just going to chop up what the equivalent about of one and a third cups of um, berries pretty fine. So again, you're going to take off those stems, put them to the side. And then I'm just going to kind of run my big knife through them to get them chopped up small. And what that, why you want to chop them up small is because that helps release any of the natural pectins that are in the fruit. And the pectins are what's going to make it um, become thick and gel together. Now, I've played around with a lot of strawberry jam recipes. And honestly, I've tried ones that you add apples, blueberries, all different kinds of things to increase the amount of pectin that is in this um, that's in the recipe because strawberries don't have a lot naturally but the thing that we found works the best is actually just adding the pectin that you can you know get at the grocery store or the, the hardware store the little packet of pectin so um, that's pretty much the only thing that we have found that's helped it gel to the point of becoming jam Otherwise, it's delicious, but it's more like a strawberry sauce. This is a good um, use for fruit that might be a tiny bit past, that you don't want to just eat um, fresh. Cut it up and make it into some jam. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I'll measure it to see if it's the right amount, but I'm going to chop this up fairly, these up fairly fine. Small pieces. And I'm just running my knife through this. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's all going to get boiled down anyway. Okay. Just run my knife through that the other way. This actually looks pretty good. 
plop them in my cup just to see. Okay, add them in, and then another third of a cup. That's probably just almost perfect, actually. I'm just going to not bother measuring them, just add them in. Okay. It's a messy job, but it smells good. Okay. So then the next ingredient that we're going to add is about three teaspoons of lemon juice, and that's about a half of a lemon. A small lemon, about a half of a small lemon. I get my handy dandy juicer again. I'm going to add that right in. I can already smell that crisp starting to smell so good. Okay. I'm going to stir this together. Okay. And then I am going to add, this is the packet of pectin I was telling you about. I'm going to gradually stir this in. Add a little. Stir it in. Stir it in. Oops. Okay. Now we're going to get this going on the stove. And what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring this to a rapid rolling boil so that when it's stirred, it doesn't stop boiling. And then we're going to take it off and we're going to add some sugar. And then we're going to bring it back to a boil again, cook it a little bit longer, and that's going to be it. So the last thing we're going to put together today is a really, really simple arugula salad that utilizes strawberries. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite dressings. It's just a citrus vinaigrette. It has some honey and some mustard in it. It's really good on almost any salad in the summer. Um, so what we're going to start off with is about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I always eyeball it. I've told you guys that before. Um, about a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And then we're going to add probably about another half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I like the tanginess that mustard gives um, dressing. The tanginess and also it gives it a thickness. I think I actually hear that um, jam boiling. If you want to come over here and take a quick look with me, um, we can see where it's at. We'll give it a quick stir. So now it is starting to bubble. It's not, it, but it stops bubbling when I stir it. So what we want is it to be rapidly boiling and not to stop when it's stirred. So that, that needs a little bit more time. Okay, so back to the dressing. We're going to take, so we had Dijon mustard, salt and pepper. Um, we're going to also add some honey. Again, probably just depending on how sweet you like it, about a teaspoon. Then we're going to add the juice of half of an orange. Squeeze it right in. This is very easy. Again, you can adjust this based on your tastes. Very, very easy. If you don't like orange, you could use grapefruit. You could, you could make this like a, um, a lime-based dressing if you're doing a a Mexican night or a Southwest type flavor that you're going for. Um, okay, and then the juice of half of a lemon as well. And the next step is we're going to stream in olive oil. I want to say it's probably going to be about a quarter of a cup for this amount of dressing. But again, you can adjust this based on how vinegary or tangy or uh, acidic you like it. So this is an assembled salad. It's really, really easy. If you wanted to make this um, for a large group, like say you were serving at a dinner for your family or at a um, function, like a cookout or something, what I love to do, and I think I've told you this before, is to make the dressing in the bottom of a big bowl. Then you pile all the ingredients on top, and that can sit in your fridge for a decent amount of time, half the day or so. And right before you're gonna serve it, you take it out and you toss it all together. And that way you're, um, you get the advantage of making it ahead, but you don't, your salad doesn't get soggy. So what we're going to do, I have some baby arugula here. So today I'm just making this for myself. I'm just going to add a good handful right into my favorite salad bowl. I love arugula because it's peppery and kind of lemony and a little bitter, but in a really good way. And it mixes nice with the sweetness of the strawberries. Um, okay. 
Next, I'm gonna choose three or four of the best strawberries I have in my bowl. So here's the, here is where you wanna really pick out the creme de la creme because you're eating them just kind of straight raw. I'm just gonna slice the tops off and then just slice them into nice pieces. Place them on top. And if you want more strawberries, go for it. I love adding fruit to my salads. I think it's something that, you know, is not super expected, but it tastes really good. So it's kind of fun. I like doing unexpected things with my cooking. Makes it, keeps it interesting. Okay. Okay, so the next ingredient that we're gonna use it's just some nice goat cheese. It's tangy and creamy. It's, I mean, you know, you could, it's kind of like feta cheese, not really. Um, it's a little bit more creamy, a little bit more tangy than a feta would be. I love it personally, but if you didn't have it and you couldn't find it, you could always use feta cheese in its place. So it comes in a, in a log like this. I'm just gonna break off a, little, a small piece and crumble it in between my fingers on top of the salad. You just break it off and then kind of just crumble it on. Now the arugula, the goat cheese, and the citrus dressing is an awesome salad um, to play around with different types of fruit. It'd be awesome, awesome when the watermelon is really fresh. You could add um, watermelon in instead of strawberries. I do it with dried cranberries a lot. It's so good. Um, you could do it with blueberries. Really, you can just go to town. Grapefruit segments are really good as well sometimes. Okay, next I'm just gonna take, clear this off, a couple sprigs of mint from my garden. Um, I'm just gonna break them off. I really love adding fresh herbs into my salads sometimes um, because it just, it brightens it up a little bit. And I love really the really herbaceous, earthy flavor of the mint. In with this. So you're just going to pile them up. You're going to pile the mint leaves up into a little pile, roll them up, and then just slice along into little ribbons. And they blend right into the salad. It's not an overwhelming amount in any one bite. You just want a little bit. And again, if you don't like mint, leave it out. Okay, so the last ingredient I'm going to add here I have some homemade croutons that I made last night. Um, we took a loaf of bread of my husband's bread and these are so easy to make. You can do it with any type of bread that you have laying around the house like a, a country loaf or an Italian loaf that you just get at the bakery or if you've made any and it's getting slightly stale and you want to um, use it up, cut it up into little chunks, heat up the oven to like 400 degrees, throw it on a baking sheet, Hit it with some olive oil, salt, really good kosher salt, and I like a little garlic powder sometimes. Um, also, if you have any rosemary, you've minced that up really fine and mix it in, tastes really, really good. And these will keep in like a Tupperware container or a Ziploc bag in your pantry for probably a week or so, but they never last that long anyway. So I like to throw a few of these on. This is gonna be a yummy lunch. So the last thing we're gonna add is a little bit of the dressing. Press that, the nice little drizzle of the citrus vinaigrette. So let's head over and take a look at the jam to see how it's doing, to see if it's come to the boil yet. Okay, so the jam is at the stage where it's boiling rapidly, and when I stir it, it immediately comes back to a boil. So this is where I want to be when I add the sugar to the jam. So we have here, so I'm gonna take it off the heat to do that. We have here one and two thirds cups of sugar. I know it's a lot, um, but it's, you know, you just use a tablespoon at a time. So we're gonna add that in. Incorporate it. Until it's dissolved. Yummy. Okay. And we're gonna put it back on the heat, and bring it back up. 
You can crank up your heat if you need to get it back up. Okay, so this is come back up to a boil. I'm gonna let this cook for one minute and then we're gonna remove it from the heat. Okay. Keep my eye on that time. I can already tell it's nice and thick. Now sometimes when, after this comes back up to a boil, you'll find some foam on the top of your jam. And that's just, you know, just from it boiling and producing that, um, that foam. So what you just wanna do is you just wanna take a spoon and skim that off. It's perfectly edible, but it's not as pretty as if, when you, if, as if you have just perfectly clear, unfoamy jam. So this has been boiling for a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it off. And I wanted to show you over here some of that foam I was talking about. I don't know if you can see, but there's just like a little bit of white foam around the edges. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna go in there with a spoon and skim it off. That's it. It comes right off. So we just cool it down, we put it in our um, glass containers and bop it in the fridge. And as long as you're gonna be using it within a short amount of time, then that should be perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna pour this in, but I'm gonna do it over the sink just in case. Now be careful, because it's very hot and it's hot sugar. So that hurts if it gets on your skin. That was pretty much perfect. I meant to do that. <laughs> okay, and so this will just sit until it cools down and we will have some beautiful strawberry jam once it does. So I can smell the crisp, it smells like it's done. I'm gonna um, give it a check and if the topping is browned and it's bubbling, then we know that it's ready and I think it might be. Oh yeah, oh my goodness, let's shut this off. Now this is when I'm happy. I put the baking sheet with the foil because this guy is overflowing. Okay, this is exactly what you want it to look like though. Now if I didn't put the baking sheet with the foil, that'd be all over the bottom of my oven and my fire alarm would probably be going off right now. So, ooh, this looks good. So what, you see all the bubbles, you see all the juices that have come out of the berries and with that cornstarch, it's made a really yummy, almost like syrupy sauce in there. Um, and the topping is nice and crispy and browned and it's gonna taste kind of nutty with those oats. Ooh, that looks so good. Okay. Now if I let this sit, the juices would be a little bit more congealed. It would have some time to kind of come together a little bit. Can't have crisp without ice cream, so. A nice big dollop of vanilla right on top. And this is gonna be awesome because it is hot, so it's all gonna melt together. And there you have it. Strawberry rhubarb crisp with a vanilla ice cream. Um, a beautiful strawberry jam that's actually already starting to congeal really nicely um, as it cools down. And a really versatile salad of arugula with strawberries, goat cheese, mint, and homemade croutons with a nice citrus vinaigrette that you can switch out the ingredients and play with to make your own. So I hope everyone had fun with this today and I hope you visit Spring Rain Farm and get some of your own berries and have your own little adventure um, picking them and then coming home and experimenting with them and making your own delicious treats. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching today. Bye. Bye.